Does a 12 year brew, was it worth the wait? Hey guys, this is my review for Incredibles 2. Now admittedly, I actually wasn't one of those people who was super excited about seeing this movie. I enjoyed the first Incredibles film, but for some reason I've always had this kind of aversion for seeing animated films in theaters. I don't know why, because usually they're always really, really good. But for some reason I always just have this aversion, and I've had it for years, and I, I don't understand. I even, like, held off on seeing Toy Story 3 for almost a week, even though I love the first two movies. Now the first thing that I'm going to talk about though is that there was a bunch of people who did a few videos talking about how this movie was part of the women first agenda stuff, like the feminist stuff and whatnot. Come on guys, really? This is actually a good story. Yeah, it does have Elastigirl as the main character in the film and there are a lot of pokes and prawns at kind of the mentality of the man in the household. But the thing is, the story, the aesthetic, everything about the art style and the setting of the story is kind of in this alternative 50s, 60s dimension. Everything from the cars to the clothing to the mannerisms of home are all based on the 50s and 60s rhetoric. It's kind of like what Brad Bird did previously with the Iron Giant, setting the story in the same time. The only thing is there's just a lot less Cold War stuff. I like the art aesthetic and I like this aspect to it. While Elastigirl is going around basically being Batman, but or Batgirl, she is actually technically the most sound person to bring back the hero initiative because she doesn't destroy stuff and Mr. Incredible has to try and suck down his pride and take care of the kids while he's away. And really, he just wants her to succeed so he can succeed. And there's that kind of me, you for me sort of aspect to the film. And it's there, but it's not shoved in your face. Here's an example for you. If we were to compare two female characters, we're gonna compare Rey from The Force Awakens, just The Force Awakens, and Elastigirl from this film. Elastigirl is successful, just as Rey was, but the thing is, Elastigirl does fail at points. She actually has to be saved, whereas Rey does everything right. In the end, she basically saves herself. Elastigirl has some weaknesses, being that she's worried about her family and that she actually has a weak spot for them. Rey doesn't really. She kind of runs off into the forest at one point because she touches a lightsaber. So in terms of just what I'm saying is Elastigirl is a well thought out character, not just because of what we had in the previous film, but because of just the elements of her character in this film. And I did enjoy it. Admittedly, the, the thing that this film has a problem with, just like the first one did, is you know who the villain is within the first 10 minutes of their introduction. And that's an unfortunate thing because there's a part in the film where they talk about a boat at one point and my girlfriend and I looked at each other and we're like, oh, I wonder what's gonna happen there. So the film is still predictable, just like the first one was, but there's still a great aspect of the family as well as just kind of switching roles and showing just how much a mom goes through while dealing with kids. And yeah, they're superhero kids, but it's all the same. But other than that, I did enjoy this film. It's a little bit predictable here and there, but the animation was fantastic. The art style was really good. And I really enjoyed the aspects with Jack-Jack. It wasn't really like, it was a comedy aspect. It was kind of cool just seeing all the powers that he could have and just how they would deal with it. The humor was really good, but yeah, it's, it's not a big movie, like it's literally, it feels exactly like Incredibles, the first one, because it takes place like barely hours apparently after the first one ended. And uh, it's a good time, it's a great animated film. And now for Brad Bird, he's back in animation. He hasn't done any since Ratatouille, I think? But he's been away from it for a while. But now that John Lazar, who was an executive producer, is now also gone from Pixar, Kinda wonder what's gonna happen, see if Brad Bird does come back for Pixar, because just he's still suffering from the utter defeat of Tomorrowland, but we'll see. Anyways, I'm gonna give The Incredibles 2 a 5 out of 7, it was a good time. It's an enjoyable movie, it's not like a standout film, but really the first one wasn't that much either, it was just a very good, enjoyable movie. So anyways guys, that's all for me, hope you enjoyed this review, I'll see you guys next time.